Hi, I'm just wanting to talk about the um, nature of awareness and, you know, this film that I'm doing is um, about duality, I'll be covering Twin Flames as well, Any, you know, you know, because Twin Flames is just another way of showing you that the two is one. And, you know, I'll, I'll be covering all that because um, two is one. You know, duality is non-duality because everything starts as nothing. And this means that um, you don't actually, there's not a beginning, there's not a start point to anything. If there's, if there's nothing at some stage, you think of it, the logic would tell you that at some stage there is nothing. And that means that there's not a start point because nothingness is, is just infinity. Infinity can't start anywhere. It's always been, even though it hasn't. And so this means that you've always existed, even though you think that you can't exist because if you start as nothing, you're still nothing. But the next, but, but the next thing that I'm going to say is that, but we have awareness within the nothing, so that's why all that really exists within this nothing is an infinite awareness. That's what the nothing is. And the nature of awareness presents the illusion of two. Um, because you're aware of yourself, what you perceive as, as, as the self, and you're aware of me just now. That's even, but the two is one, you see. It's like what's going on is you, your, your ego is telling you that you're the separate self. And when you look into here, you're looking into a mirror. But the mirror, you see, sees itself as a separate self. Even though it's one thing. It's, um, and that's really what the twin flame thing is about. You know, the twin flame is just another way of showing you this. It's showing you it through intimacy. Because that's what we're always, we're always actually experiencing intimacy. Um, reality is trying to show us how everything is, is one. And you're only ever, when you awaken, you start to perceive that everything is, is you. You see it all around you. You see that you start perceiving how, well, what I started to perceive after this awakening, that everything was me. That I don't, because everything must start as nothing, but if it starts as nothing, you're still nothing. And obviously a few years into the awakening, I found out that this is in Buddhism, it's called non-duality that I'm talking about, and that I was perceiving. But also there are, there are infinite parallel lines also. Because if you've got nothing, there's nothing, this is infinity of possibility. So that means that you can have any idea. So that means any idea you can think of is another option so it's like you've got the self
But imagine your thoughts and ideas are coming for infinite parallel lines. This is what sci many scientists, you know, have theories on. And of course, anything, if you've got an, an infinite potential, then that means infinite ideas are possible. So that means anything you can have, basically. And so all these infinite ideas and parallel lines have been, what I've realized, have, are infinitely, have infinitely been tried and tested within this one space. You see? So you're, you're experiencing the infinitely perfected version of this. It's already happened, you see. But it's your consciousness that is, that is choosing to experience whatever you're experiencing. And consciousness comes from an infinite nothing, an infinite continuum of nothing, which infinitely creates different shades, but it's been infinitely tried and tested. So what this produces is eventually, it produ because it's infinity running itself, it creates infinite possibilities. But when you have nothing and nothing infinitely running itself, it creates a personality, Con like consciousness. But because there's no time in this, there's not a structure to it. Because because time doesn't exist within nothing. Right? So so it means that this space that we perceive as time has infinitely, like I just said, run itself. And that this is also how form comes about. Um, because you've got a nothing that's infinitely been run. Um, you know, so that that means that that's how form comes about because of the infinite then you've, if you have an inf a, a nothing infinite running itself infin infinitely there's infinite possibilities ideas and then a personality develops and then that becomes the, the infinite consciousness you know but um, you know the most astonishing part for many people is that it can't begin but that's because you're stuck in with the illusion of time but time doesn't exist, like I say, within nothing. And all there is is the nothing. But the nothing, like I say, because it's infinitely run itself, that that then develops, because it's an infinitely tried and tested nothing, it develops it a perfect consciousness. And that becomes your director. That's what hap that's what um I was perceive I perceive all the time. And this awaken how the consciousness is our driver, and that is the God. Um, and there's only you, and, and a life doesn't need an outside force also to create it because it's, it's one infinite nothing. You can't have two, you see. You can have the illusion of two, but it can't really be two. It can only ever be you experiencing you, or what you perceive as you, and what you perceive as separate. But that comes from the awareness like i say it's like i said earlier very much earlier in the film that's what the nature of awareness does it presents the awareness but the aware of you know so you're observing yourself but you then that perceives a self and then so therefore everything else must be separate but um that's just the nature of awareness you see and once you wake up to this you realize that nothing is really important because we're not actually going anywhere it's like you've already, it's, there's nowhere to get to, because there's just nothing. There's just infinite awareness doing whatever it wants to, but there's no real importance. So then when you see this, you see that people are running around like crazy because they're crazy. Because they've been programmed into this, you know, and I talk a lot about programming. Um, and if they do it by, the re way the system programs people is they, they understand about the law of duality. And they use this against us to to convince us that the dark, this 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 devil or dark force that's going to hurt us, when actually everything is one. Right, evil and and dark are not the same thing, but or right and wrong, I should say, are not the same thing as evil. Doing someone harm is something that you know is going to do them harm, so that would come under evil. But right and wrong aren't the same, but they want to convince you that they're the same. Um, but they use this division to, and you create division in reality, then you create craziness. And that's what they use this. 
Um, but um, that I just wanted to do a video really on the nature of awareness really and, and also mention the fact that the system uses division to separate us. You see it every see it in sport, you see it all around you, you know, country is that's what countries are about. It's all about convincing you that you are your country. So the other one's the enemy and they think the same about you. But and I'm just gonna end it there. Thank you very much for watching, thank you. How does nothing become aware? Um, well, <clears throat> I'll start off by, you know, I'll talk about, I mentioned science a lot. You know, I found out a while ago, um, I didn't look for it, and I was perceiving something in this awakening, like a reflector conscious, I just typed it on Google, and I found out that that's what science talks about, and many scientists, according to this, po this information I found, say that that's how the nothing becomes aware it simply sees a reflection of itself it's like imagine darkness but there's like a mirror and that's what they say you see it's basically um a per you know a perception of of a mirror and then you think like when a baby's been born that's a good example the surroundings convince you of what you think you are right different surroundings convince you of another thing if you were brought up with wolves, you'd probably think you were a wolf. Um, so it's the surroundings that convince you of what you are. Um, and the surroundings are the separate thing to you. And that's the same with them. You know, but the two is, is actually you, you see. It's all the same self. Experience, it's, it's just the same thing, but you see it as separate, you see. Because like I say about awareness... That presents the illusion of two when it's actually one. Um, it's like two lovers, twin flames. You know, people talk of twin flame. The twin flame thing is about un helping us. People get this kind of relationship sometimes when they're very, very ascended. And I've actually had visions of myself um, in this kind of thing. And I believe it's in a different reality or something. Um, and... Basically, this kind of relationship is just another way to show you how the two is one. That's the point of it, and the point is for you to share this knowledge. Um, and there's other ways of showing you, you know, you don't have to have a lover in your life to show you that. But that's the point of Twin Flames. <clears throat> to show you that you are her and she is you. And that you're one. And the two has come back to the one in this kind of situation. But that's what awareness itself presents. And the awareness comes from... Um, what I perceive all the time is a relentless, imagine nothing, but imagine nothingness has been infinitely, infinitely tried and tested. So when someone's been infinitely tried and tested, that creates the perfect, the infinitely perfected version. So that then becomes a perfect, a perfect perception, a perfect idea, a perfect consciousness. And that's how consciousness, I believe, is, is created. Um, through this perfect continuum 
like science says about form, about how a little line of form is actually everything else, because of this continuum of that. And the separate form is actually part of, is the one form, you see. Like when you look around you, you see how everything's connected, you know. And, but that's what happens. When you've got nothingness, that means infinity. If you've got infinity, that means you've got a thing that's forever happened. So if you've forever went somewhere, then you can only ever be a perfect, you're getting the most perfect version of that. So this is what I believe develops consciousness. So it's already been developed before you're aware of it. You know, and I think that's basically what everything is, a perfect consciousness, but it manifests from, it's already manifested from this infinity because there's no time, you see, in this nothingness. There's no time. We created time ourselves, um, but time doesn't, doesn't exist. You know, nothing really exists when you really think of nothingness. All dimensions, all form, you know, past lives, I just, I just think they're dreams. I just think that, that, that reality is like when you go to bed, you sleep, and then you dream. I think that's what all reality is. I think it's no different. I just think that the deeper the sleep, the more the physicality. That's what I think. Um, because if there's nothing... Like when you sleep, there's nothingness. And then you dream, maybe. And I think this is just that. If you're nothing at some stage, then I think you can only be experienced a dream. What else can you experience if you don't exist? If you don't exist at some stage, then the only thing that can really come is if a dream. So like, an, that's what I think everything is. Interconnected dreams. I think this is what Akashic Records are. It's all dreams. And there's no form at all. You know, science also can explain how there's no form. Everything is just formlessness. If it's nothingness. It's just awareness that I believe mashes everything together before we even think we begin. Um, any place. But we think there's a beginning and an end because of the illusion of time, you see. You take that away, you realise there's no time, there's no form. But the, the, the apparent form is from, an, like I said earlier, an infinitely tried and tested nothingness that makes a perfect reality full of growth that's what we come here for we come here to for growth and that's the whole point of life the meaning of life is to grow and to learn from your mistakes most people if they were to die today or tomorrow wouldn't have anything to say for themselves if some angel they would perceive as an angel which is just a higher vibrational being came to them and said, what have you done with your life? Like someone watching over you on the other side, some people believe this. Um, they wouldn't have some, anything to say for themselves. Because most people just respond, but they don't, you know, understand anything. They don't try to understand. They just want to be right all the time. They're in their egos. And even the ego is an illusion because everything comes from nothing. The ego is an idea. You know, most people, like I say, you know, they make their, especially children now and with the smart devices and everything, most people are making their decisions, pr practically everyone makes their decisions based on their perception. That's, you know, me included. And most people don't realise this, that you're not even making a free, there's no such thing as a free thought of your own because it's programmed by everything else around you. So you can either programme yourself or you can be programmed by reality. So when people say, oh, that's delusional, they're basing it on their own programming. So most people aren't rational. <laughs> There's no such thing as a rational thought or idea because it's all manipulated. And, um, you know, I'm not going to talk about manipulation, just that kind of stuff just now, but that's what it is. Um, but th I'm just going to end it there. I just wanted to answer on um, that question. <laughs>
the power of nothingness meditation, um, well, that's something that happened to me when I had this awakening. When I had this awakening, um, I went through, you know, a lot of things. Um, this unex I, my awakening was unexpected. Um, one day I just had enough of the way I was living. And obviously I was meant to wake up at that time. And when it was time to wake up, I couldn't turn away from this thing. I was, it wasn't allowing me, I didn't want to wake up. Um, and, and I was running around, you know, like someone that was possessed by a demon and even saying that and thinking that because what had happened, I was awake to reality and the negativity and the, the almost like demonic energies that is within humans and within this human reality. Um, and what happened was of all, because I was still in that low dimension, I could feel my own human low vibrational energy. So then once I don't feel that now because I've ascended way past higher than that, but I was ascending and healing because of, I kept on perceiving and thinking, think of nothing. It was like I was connecting now because when you awaken, it's like the lid's been lifted and now you're connecting with your higher, your divine self. And so that's now communicating with you. It's not like someone talking to you. It's it's more like David Icke says it in his videos. He said a thought form. That's, that's what it's like. It's like an idea. It's like you're having these ideas and you're perceiving. Your perception has changed. And you're perceiving things. And you're perce And I was perceiving at the time, just think of nothing, Sean. Think of nothing. And I kept on And then that became a habit pattern. Um, and thinking of nothing is... A meditation I believe is already out there, but I didn't I didn't do any meditation before. I didn't know anything about meditation really. Um and this came to me and that's how I started to heal, that's how I started to heal myself and tap into infinite knowledge. Um and that that is the power of nothingness meditation, because when you think of nothingness, when you tell yourself to think of nothing, you're tapping into the infinity of nothing. So you're tapping into infinite possibility. That's what nothingness is. It's infinite possibility um, of any of anything. You know, and that's that was basically one of the first things that happened. And from that, infinite knowledge came. And healing and ascension and clarity and working out things. But nothingness is one... This is why when I talk about non-duality, that was one of the first things I was perceiving. Um, and... Yeah, and and that's it. You just think of nothing and then tell yourself to think of nothing. Think of nothing. Think of nothing. And then when um, something comes to mind, think of nothing again. And I'm just going to carry this on for a few for a few minutes. You can do it for five, ten minutes if you want, whatever you think. Because um, whatever you think is, is the right way for you. We can never be triggered because everything's actually perfect. Everything's working for you, not against you. But I'll do it just now for a few minutes. Just think of nothing. Think of nothing. Think of nothing. And so when someone comes to your head, tell yourself to think of nothing again. Think of nothing. Think of nothing. Think of nothing. Remember, thinking of nothing takes you into the infinity of your consciousness, your awareness, your nothingness. That your nothingness is an infinite continuum of which makes you infinitely perfect. Think of nothing. That's what you're tapping into now. Think of nothing. Think of nothing. Think of absolutely nothing. Think of nothing. Think of nothing. This is taking you deeper and deeper within your heart space where, where you all your unconscious healing parts are that need healing. Um, think of nothing. Think of nothing. Think of nothing. Think of absolutely nothing right now. Think of nothing. Think of nothing. Think of nothing. Think of nothing. Just flow into what I'm saying. Think of nothing. Think of nothing. Just feel it flow into it. Think of nothing. 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 Think of absolutely nothing. Now, I'm just going to leave it there. Um, and for a moment, just, just allow yourself to feel that. Just, just feel that... Um, few minutes meditation that I've just done um, and you can do this to yourself you know I can I usually do it for about five ten minutes but you but 
just allow yourself at this moment to, to feel. Don't think too much, just feel what this nothingness meditation has done for you. Just feel that. Just go with whatever that's showing you, whatever that's feeling, just go with that. And you'll notice there's nothing to think about. <laughs> when we think of things, it's a waste of time. That's why, I, you know, you're, I've realised that nothing actually means anything. It's just nothingness, isn't it? Everything must come from nothing, so like a meditation, it's still nothing. Um, you know, so, so that's, you know, that's just why in awakening, all that desire melts away, because that was one of the first things I was perceiving, and once you realise, you think, everything must come from this nothing then. So it's still nothing. So people are going crazy over nothing. It's just a dream, really. It's just a dream. It's like all the colours in this room and all the things happen in this room. Eventually, at some stage, this, a reality has to come from nothing. Which means it's all just like, like art or something. It's, it's, but it doesn't actually mean nothing. And people, you know, think it, everything means something. It doesn't. It doesn't. Because if it's come from nothing, it means it's still nothing. It's just, you're just having a party or something or enjoyment or something, but it doesn't actually matter. Um, and your purpose on this life and is your soul, your job is not your job you have from nine to five. Um, when people say get a job, and they're not ascending, then they're not fulfilling, they're, they're not doing their job properly. Your job is your soul purpose. And if you don't do that, then, you know, when you die, if someone asks you what you've done with your life, like a more ascended being, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? I, I was a slave all my life? Or are you going to say that I went deep within me and I tried to ascend to the best of my ability? Right? At least you'll have something to say then. At least you can stand when you're a spirit with your head held high. But even the spirit world is just nothing. This is just another dream. Right? It's just all dreams. And um, this, is, this is what my awakening was, was about. You months, any things afterward. But what happens is the nothingness meditation makes you present. Once you're present, people don't understand that when you've had an awakening, people don't get it how you don't want anything anymore because they're chasing things. But the, but the thing is, once you stop chasing, you attract. You attract infinite abundance. And you realise that the growth is always, the infinite growth is always there, but we don't notice it because we're paying too much attention to outward illusions. Then once you become present, then reality becomes attracted to you, you see. And um, that's the trick, you see. Much of the things that we chase, it's ego illusions. But when you stop and think, how much is this thing good for me? It's not actually that good for you, what you're chasing. It's not actually going to make you feel that great. But the ego plays tricks, you see. So, you know, that's another thing. But I'm just going to end um, this film here. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.